Hello there and welcome. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking. And as always, before the video starts, I want to use this opportunity to express my eternal gratitude towards those who decided to support me financially, be it through Patreon, PayPal or Super Thanks. I really appreciate your generosity, so thank you friends and have a blessed day. Now today's video I will start with Avdiivka, as for the last few weeks it become the hottest spot in the Russo-Ukrainian war. First let's discuss the situation on the northern flank, where Russians continued to expand their zone of control around the village of Krasnogarivka, assaulting Ukrainian forces in the general direction of villages of Stipova and Berdichi. After capturing important tactical heights, Russians continue assaulting Ukrainian positions beyond it in the general direction of Avdiivka. Coal plant. Russians also continued their offensive operation in the general direction of the village of Nova Kalinova, expanding their zone of control around this rail line in the process. When it comes to territorial changes, Russians were able to advance and capture the tree line adjacent to this rail line. And this is exactly how much territories they were able to capture from the Ukrainian side. It seems that with the loss of this important tactical height, Ukrainian positions to the east of this rail line became compromised, and under extreme pressure from the Russian attacks, they were forced to retreat. Of course, Ukrainians here are not sitting idle, as they continuously counterattack Russians in order to negate their success and perhaps even recapture some of the recently lost positions. But despite all their attempts, all of those attacks were repelled by the Russians. On the interesting note, Ukrainians finally acknowledged the capture of this tactical height and publish a video of a drone strike upon the Russian flags that was installed on top of that hill. Here you can see that on the video. As to whether one Russian flag and one Soviet flag was a valid target is not for me to decide, but something tells me that the drone itself cost much more than just two flags and one stick. The territorial changes that I've just covered were also acknowledged by a pro-Ukrainian side. For example, this is a deep state map, which is a pro-Ukrainian source. And this is the territorial changes that they have recently acknowledged. So this is the situation of yesterday and this is the situation of today. As you can see, the hill is captured as well as the territories adjacent to the rail line. Then from here let's move to the southern flank of Avdiivka and discuss the situation here also. The Russian forces continued their offensive operations all across this portion of the front. They attacked from the settlement of Spartak in the direction of Avdiivka along the T0505 road. Also assaulted Ukrainian positions in front of Avdiivka from the settlement of Apitne. Attacked Ukrainians in the direction of Severne and Tonenke from the settlement of Vadiane, and also advanced in the direction of Pervomaisky. It would seem that Russian attacks in the direction of Avdiivka was denied by the Ukrainian defense. Same could be said about these attacks from the settlement of Apitne and from the settlement of Vadiane. However, Russian attacks in the direction of Pervomaisky seen some success. And as a result of successful offensive operations, Russians were able to advance within Vadiana and capture a very small portion of that settlement. When it comes to the confirmed losses by the Russian forces, it is important to note that pro-Ukrainian side mostly exaggerates those losses. And when you look closer into them, you find out that they are simply not true. However, some research suggests that Russians did lose big amount of equipment. And those are the numbers. North of Avdeevka, Russians lost 13 tanks. 6 destroyed and 7 abandoned or damaged. Also 39 APCs and IFVs, of which 25 is destroyed and 14 damaged or abandoned. Russians also lost about 5 Russian built MRAPs, which I would assume is the Tiger vehicle, of which 1 is destroyed and 4 is damaged or abandoned. Now when it comes to the southern flank, Russians also took some losses and they are as follows. 4 tanks. One of them is destroyed and three of them either damaged or abandoned. Five APCs or IFVs, of which all five destroyed. One MRAP, which again is destroyed. And one recovery vehicle, which would seem to be either damaged or abandoned. Now all of these Russian losses were geolocated. Of course, Russians probably lost more than that. And more geolocations will soon follow. As you can see, those numbers are not that high. And most Russian sources are claiming that it is a small price to pay to capture such a big city as Avdiivka. Again, the battle for this settlement has just started. 
and more losses will surely happen. If you have liked this video so far, I would kindly ask you to consider supporting it with a like, comment or if you haven't subscribed a subscription, thank you kindly and let's continue on. From here let's quickly visit Bakhmut and discuss the territorial change that appeared here as well and it appeared to the north of the city. As a result of successful offensive operations from the settlement of Yagodne and Birhivka, Russians were able to advance in the direction of Hromove and capture this much territory from the Ukrainian side. As you can see, almost the entire forest that ends at the very outskirts of the village. Now, whether this is the sign that Russians will be advancing in the direction of Hromove is unclear, but at this point, as you can see, they are now able to advance from the forest and from the Bakhmut city as well. Then from here, let's quickly visit Velika Novosilka sector and discuss the situation here. Interestingly enough, it was Russians who were on the offensive on this front, as they attacked from the settlement of Priyutne in the directions of villages of Livadne, Novodarivka and Rivnopol, and also counterattacked Ukrainians from the settlements of Novodonetsky and Novomayorsky. When it comes to this portion of the front, it would seem that Russians are attacking in attempt to advance further. But when it comes to this portion of the front, it would seem that they are mostly counterattacking in attempt to fix Ukrainian forces on this flank and not allow Ukrainians to relocate their forces and help their brethren on the left flank of this front. So the fighting on the right flank is mostly of positional style. And the fighting on the left flank is mostly with territorial gains in mind. From Velika Novosilka, let's move to the Rabotina Verbova sector and discuss the situation here. In my last video, I reported that Ukrainians were oddly quiet and that there were almost no attacks in the direction of Verbova, Novoprokopivka, Kampani, and Novopakrovka, and that they were actively undergoing through rotations. After all, it seems that they were busy reconsolidating their troops, and after they had done so, restarted their offensive operations in the direction of Russian-controlled Novoprokopivka and Kampani. However, despite the fact that they've brought many Western-built equipments, they were unable to advance and had taken serious losses. For example, there is geolocated footages and videos of at least two Leopard 2 tanks being destroyed or damaged by the Russians. Now, the first video of Ukrainian tank being hit while fastly moving is here on your screens. As report suggests, it was hit by Russian ATGM. And here is a video from another angle. As you can see, it is standing still and is on fire. Now, about the second Leopard tank. There is no video and you can obviously see that its turret position is different, which probably means this is another Leopard 2 tank. Then there is another video of two Ukrainian striker vehicles advancing near Rabotina village, both of them are hit and one of them caught fire with its ammunition blowing up. You can see the smoke grenades going off as they burn. As both Russians and Ukrainians are actively advancing, they are constantly losing equipment and men. And no one should be surprised by that. They are purely logical. With this, I end today's video. Hopefully it was informative enough and to your liking. If it was, please consider supporting it with all the means you consider necessary. Thank you in advance. As always, humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember, Russia will be free and great.